Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. The tale of moving a server which cannot be powered down. 5 miles to a new office. CEO is on site and says our tech support is crap. I found that my overall tolerance for bullsh asterisk T has plummeted during this lockdown. Don't use control plus F, use control plus H. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. The tale of moving a server which cannot be powered down. 5 miles to a new office. I just remembered this one, and at the time it felt like just another day in cowboy IT. Now in hindsight I see it for the mad and brilliant plan it was. The scenario, SMB who outgrew their office and in-office data center, migrated to a new office building and most things out to a data center. There was however still a few things in the old office building. And a rapidly looming end of lease date by which point the office had to be empty. So we come to the problem. I don't recall the name of the server. This was around 2009 or so, and the server was a ML350, which wasn't particularly new even at the time. This server had some crucial software that we needed for six more months. Now, the old office only had a 2 megabits per second lease line, and the server had a lot of data with the software. Of course, the office was closing in three months. So, a review was done. Do we attempt to migrate at the data? Well it's not needed for more than 6 months at which point it can all go. It would have taken a lot of time and effort to build a replacement server and migrate the data. Do we power it down and move it? Nope can't do that either server is so flaky it might not ever come back up. In comes the hero of our story. We'll call him Phil because it seems to fit. Phil suggests we simply move the server. Without powering it down. The server has two power supplies. If we take this spare rack mount UPS and put it in the car, run a long power cord to the server, we can carry it down the stairs while it's running and then get it in the car. We can move it while it's powered on and get it into the new rack. Simple. Sounded horrendous. So of course, we got the let's do it mandate. This is the way this beautiful horrendous piece of IT went down. UPS sat in the car boot with a power cord waiting for the server. Using the wall sockets on the way from the upstairs server room to the car park, multiple different power cords were daisy-chained into the two power supplies of the server, until a long extension lead got it out of the door and into the car boot. The nerve-wracking five-mile car ride, with a continually beeping UPS warning its mains power is off, and spinning SCSI discs then took place. The carry of the server and daisy-chaining of the power cords ensued luckily this time it was downstairs however. The server was eventually situated in its new racky home. We didn't lose any discs, but a few people lost some hair. CEO is on site and says our tech support is crap. I used to do phone support for a device that was in a lot of stores and fast food joints. This device would get jammed all the time. I'd rather not say what device. And it would work great, but it had to be kept reasonably clean. Which these places didn't do. I could walk somebody through clearing it in my sleep. This one store I called up, a small chain of East Coast retail slash fast food, had reported a problem. The manager was the type I hate, she didn't want my help and didn't want to touch the device. She wanted a tech to come out. I pleaded with her to walk through clearing the device. Can I call you back if you're busy? It'll just take 10 minutes. She was extremely rude and said this thing is never working at jams all the time just send somebody out here and hangs up. Tech sent. He arrives on site and clears the jam and cleans the device, crap had spilled all over it. Takes 10 minutes. The CEO of the chain happened to be doing a store visit that day. He told the field tech this is why we pay you guys thousands per year? The manager could have done that and also cleaned it. Our tech says we called them and offered to walk through unjamming and cleaning. The store manager says no way did we do that. The CEO says I'll get to the bottom of this and begins an inquiry. The field tech said the CEO was pissed and was talking about lawsuits if the field tech was lying. And he hopes the notes in the ticket could be backed up because we were about to lose a client and that's not on him. They contact my boss and they pull the ticket and the notes. They pull the recorded call where I pleaded with the manager to walk through some simple steps. 
They read and hear everything I wrote about this rude manager who didn't want to help at all. The CEO gives a directive to every store that no one is to be rude and to help us out if we call so we can avoid a tech visit. Every time after that when we called the managers were very helpful to us and it saved them a bunch of money on a tech visit. And they kept the things a lot cleaner. I found that my overall tolerance for bullsh asterisk t has plummeted during this lockdown. There are a collection of phrases slash actions that the end user has slash does that invokes instant resistance in me. Could you ring me to talk me through these instructions? No, my instructions are four bullet points long and contain no jargon. You're an adult. This needs to be done ASAP slash urgent slash use of high importance flag. When I read the body of the request, it relates something that doesn't need to be done until the next day. Absolutely no. I send out a company-wide email with instructions and information. User replies asking a question that has been covered by my initial email. Your email is being ignored. Read the original email damn it. I'm no good at i.t. In that case don't get a job in IT. Dash, I send round company-wide emails regularly stating that any i.t issue is to be sent to a group i.t email in every instance, then simply reply to whomever an i.t picks it up. Users are not to email individual members of the team to report issues under any circumstances as they will not be picked up, dot, and user emails me direct to report and gets pissy at me later on that I've not responded. I bet they'd struggle to empty a boot full of water with instructions on the heel. Dash, user emails i.t. 24 minutes later, user emails i.t again about the same issue. Actual event. She wanted a training link sent to her, and she sent both emails after I'd left for the day. I'd already told her twice to send one email only, and I'd get to it as soon as I could. Dot after this, I went to her head of department. She hasn't spoken to me since. Dash I know you're busy, but... Get in the sea. Dash, while I am moving through a department with purpose, while you're here I've got something to ask you. Why aren't you in the sea yet? Dash have followed your instructions and it hasn't worked, I log on, see that they've not followed my instructions at all. I tell them to follow the instructions, this isn't how I usually do it. And bing it works. It's almost as if your way is sh asterisk t and my way works. Because I know what he am doing and you're a stale donut masquerading as a human. Don't use control plus F, use control plus H. So a few years back one of my publishers called me in to help with an emergency project, basically me translating and editing a huge body of boring ass text. And it had to be done in the office cause it was a key national project. In the office there was a girl about my age who was relatively new. She just sat there all week working intensely but slowly, mumbling and looking stressed. On the second to last day of my project we're alone in the office. I make some comment about ugh this is so incredibly tedious, and she says something to the effect of you're telling me. We talk for a bit I explain what I'm doing. Wait, what are you doing? Apparently for an equally huge book someone really high up in government decided he didn't like a bunch of the specific terms they made up for the project, so at last minute, hands over a list of 40 or so, they all need to be swapped out. She's been at it for like 8 days. In thinking okay that's like an hour of work at the most if it's all in one big file. Wait a minute. Oh no uh. Can you show me how you're doing this? She finds a word, pastes over it manually, next, find, paste, next. Ah. Uh. Don't use control plus F, use control plus H. What's that? Control plus F is find, control plus H is find. And replace. But that's what I'm already doing. Look. Just try. I, just do it you'll see. Pops it up, kinda speaking to herself what's this? Find and. Source text. Target text. Replace. Replace all? She starts mumbling to herself oh my god, oh my god, oh no, oh my god, why, oh my god, oh no, and crying softly. Poor girl lol. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.